Uh, it's been my privilege to um, come back home to British Columbia, and um, I'm delighted to be part of the faculty with the um, department here. So um, I actually polled the residents um, when I um, was trying to decide what to talk about this morning, and of the uh, options I gave them, this is the one they chose. I'm not sure if <laughs> this was the least of all evils, but anyway, <laughs> this is what you're going to get. Now, it's primarily directed to the residents to give you some um, idea of what is available to you because I often find talking to resident groups that they don't realize um, what the AUA has to offer. And um, also for the rest of the um, audience, um, you may be, I may be able to enlighten you on a few things um, as well. Let's make this informal. If you have any questions um, as I go along, please don't hesitate to ask. So what I'd like to do is really outline some of the um, educational offerings that the um, AUA Office of Education has created and the new learning management system which will be launched at the 2010 um, AUA in Orlando, Florida um, in May. And then um, I also want to uh, show you, and some of you may have already seen the um, Core Curriculum 1.0 we are introducing Core Curriculum 2.0 at the um, Orlando meeting, and um, I will show you um, a little bit uh, sneak preview of that because it will be launched uh, at that meeting as well. And then um, I often get asked, you know, um, I have an idea for a course. How can I, you know, let AUA know that, you know, I think this is something that would be important. How can I um, apply to to do a course? And so I'm going to just outline um, that process, both for the annual meeting courses as well as the standalone um, year-round courses. So to start off, I'd like to just um, outline, we've really put a lot of focus on developing our um, review courses. Now, these are courses that are designed to help um, American residents prepare for their uh, what's called a qualifying exam, which is their part one of the American Board of Urology, which is their written um, board exam. And then the, uh, we've just this year, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit about that, created another course that's directed at preparing them for their oral board exam. Um, and that uh, is uh, what occurs after the, they've been in practice for about 18 months um, after their qualifying exam. And then in addition to that, we have created a recertification MOC course. In the United States, as um, a board uh, certified urologist, we have to redo a written exam every 10 years, plus do some additional um, CME and educational programs for maintenance of certification. So this course has really been directed to that group. However, I will tell you and share with you a little later that this course is also really the cognitive material that goes into the oral exam because it's very clinically based. In addition to these um, review courses, we also provide the basic science course, which is really designed for the junior level resident and, um, and um, uh, encompasses uh, a four-day conference that is held at the University of Virginia. It's been traditionally held there. There have been suggestions of moving it to other places. However, this is a course that we try to keep very cost effective because it is for junior residents. Um, and, uh, and University of Virginia works with us and they can help to do that. And also, uh, it turns out when you look at the programs in the United States, over 80% of them are east of the Mississippi. So having a course on the East Coast does not really significantly discriminate um, against people attending this. The emphasis of this course is on basic sciences and the clinical applicability to urology. This year, um, we have two pre-course courses. In other words, the day before this course um, starts, there's a urodynamic and pathology for urologists um, course. Dr. Painter has done a great job of putting together the pathology for urologists. This course may lose its appeal as the American Board of Urology is actually taking out the pathology part of their um, um, QE qualifying exam. So it'll be interesting to see um, how many people actually attend this. Um, the annual review course, again, is a traditional course that's been going on for many years and has gained a superb uh, reputation. It is basic urology knowledge, and as I said, it's preparing residents for their part one of the American Board of Urology qualifying exam, which is equivalent to your written um, Royal College um, exam. We do find we get a lot of Canadian um, residents that come to the annual review course. Uh, and interestingly enough, we also 
is very popular with practicing urologists. They find that this is an excellent place to come and really get updated um, on the nuts and bolts of urology. Um, it has been um, held in New Orleans and will be there again this June. Um, we do tend to move that course around a little bit um, around the country. Again, we try to keep this course very cost effective and keep the registration cost down to a minimum um, just to cover our costs. You would be amazed how much it costs to run these um, courses. Just for having Wi-Fi alone in the conference rooms costs between twenty and thirty thousand dollars. It is just it's unbelievable what the costs are and I did not truly appreciate this until I started looking at all these details. So we try very hard um, to, and, and the AUA is a nonprofit um, organization and we try very hard to just break even on our courses and we are not necessarily making money so especially with these review courses which we feel are, are really geared to um, residents. This was a new course, the AUA recertification MOC course. This was a new course this year, mainly because there was a great deal of angst <laughs> uh, when it became required in, in the past uh, uh, sort of two to three years, just about every practicing urologist, not all of them, there's a group that's grandfather clause in before 1990 that don't have to do their recertification exams. but. Um, now that there's a larger group, and in fact there were 247 people writing their recertification exam this fall, it was in um, uh, October, um, there's a great deal of angst. And you can imagine, you've been out in practice for 20 years, you've been subspecialized into, you know, whatever, infertility, uh, stone disease, female urology, and now you're expected to go back and know general urology. So we created this course very specifically. It was a two and a half day course last year. We're going to make it a two day course this year. So it's going to be really focused. They're going to be long days, but they'll be very focused. It's practical and clinically specific. In other words, it, it really looks at guidelines, clinical issues. It's not basic science. So you're not going to get embryology, anatomy, and physiology because that's not what is on this exam. This exam is very much clinically um, oriented. Um, so that's why I think this uh, course is actually a very good course for people that are preparing for their qualifying exam for the knowledge part um, and also uh, or for not their um, not their qualifying their uh, oral boards this is exactly the, the material that will be on oral boards in case scenario presentations um, we actually, last year when we were planning this meeting, because we figured there'd be about 250 people taking this exam, we planned to have 250 people in the course, figuring that it probably wouldn't fill to that. Well, within the first you know, few months we had it out there, it filled to 250. It then went to 300. It then went to 325. We ended up with 340 some odd people at this course. It is, has been hugely popular. Um, and we ended up at the last minute because there were so many people that wanted to get into the course but for whatever reason the dates that we had it weren't applicable to them we actually did a live streaming of that course at the last minute and then we have continued that is purch purchasable online as a um, as a webcast as well and we plan to do the same thing um, with next year's course so if you can't go to it you can you will be able to purchase the webcast I don't think we're going to do live streaming next year there were a lot of uh, issue technical issues and so I think I think we'll just have the webcast enduring materials but you can um, purchase that if you're not able to go to the um, course it's in I didn't know where Tyson's Corner was it's actually a suburb of Washington DC <laughs> um, and it's in September and it, it's planned specifically to be four to six weeks before the recertification exam which occurs in um, October this was also a new course that we put on um, this was the course designed specifically to help uh, urologists prepare for their oral boards. This is their part two of the American Board of Urology. And um, this course is very much focused on the psychology of doing an oral exam and the concept of how to run through case scenarios, what kind of, you know, um, because you're, you're, you're assessed in that exam not only on your performance and your cognitive um, performance but also your professionalism and um, and how you present yourself so this course was really designed to do that it's very hi um, highly interactive 
we um, actually have them run through. They do two one-hour sessions with three case scenarios in each session, which is exactly what the oral board is. And they, at the, but different from the oral board, they do get immediate feedback from their examiner as to what they did well, what they didn't do well. And then they have um, sessions where they get together and they um, can do mock um, uh, questions together, talk about things that influence or, or may influence their performance, and really a lot about stress reduction, relaxation, because a lot, of, I mean, having been an oral examiner for over 10 years, half the battle is they defeat themselves because they get so nervous and so anxious. And if they can just, they, you know, by the time you get to that point, you know the stuff. It's just a matter of staying calm, cool, and collected and not getting yourself um, um, in a great deal of angst. So th uh, this course is planned to be repeated. We're actually, for, that, for this first year, we only had 60 slots because this is a very complex course to put together. We've got, with the 60 people, we had 12 examiners. They were rotating people through every hour and it, it went from like you know, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at night where they well, were going through these sessions. Because there was such a huge response to this and we had such an enormous waiting list, we could not increase this course last year. We've increased it, we're going to increase it for 2015 and we'll have um, uh, 120 slots in this course next year and we are doubling the faculty so that we can accommodate. So this is going to be a big course um, and we'll just uh, see if it continues to do as well as it has. So other areas that we are working on at um, Office of Education is helping um, urologists be aware of recommendations for clinical care. And of course, that is related to the AUA guidelines. Um, this is a very rigorous process. There are um, full committees that are created. Uh, Stuart Wolf has been in charge of this and for each uh, various topic um, that needs to be updated. Um, there is a committee put together. This past year, um, we worked on the um, stone disease and uh, urotrauma as well as um, management of hypospadias. The stone disease and urotrauma will be presented this year at the uh, annual meeting and that's what we are planning to do that is as each new guideline comes out it will be presented just like last year was the um, uh, can, uh, uh, castrate resistant prostate cancer and the PSA um, screening um, uh, guidelines came out. And so those were featured um, at the meeting as part of the plenary sessions, as well as um, a course. Um, the uh, other aspect that has become very important um, for American urologists is <clears throat> part of their um, MOC, maintenance of certification, as well as CME, is the issues of patient safety. And um, we do, in, in most of our medical centers around the country, we do very intensive um, crew resource management training. And it is required. As a surgeon at UCI, if I did not do my crew resource management, I would not get in the OR. So you have to do this in these centers. And there is very good evidence worldwide that this is improving patient safety. It's reducing the number of wrong side, wrong patient, um, those kind of issues um, in uh, particularly surgical procedures. And the AUA has been very committed to this and um, uh, in, uh, in our discussions with the American Board of Urology. And AUA is very unique amongst American surgical subspecialties in terms of our collaborative relationship with the board. Most so surgical societies and their boards do not have a very good relationship. They're kind of like cats and dogs. But we actually have a very good relationship. And this was one area that the American Board of Urology identified as something that um, was important. So we've actually sent uh, two of our um, members, uh, Tim Average and um, Fernando Kim, took the Bueller Aging Center um, course at Northwestern that's specifically on patient safety education. I was talking to Tim after he came back from it, and he said this was the most amazing course he had ever taken, and it is a course that has significantly changed the way he practices to improve um, his own patient uh, safety. So he and Fernando are creating this three-hour course, which we presented at the annual meeting. It is free to whoever wants to attend it. Um, and it is on Tuesday morning from 8.30 to 11.30 um, in the convention center. So I just um, let you know about that. Um, we also create publications. You've probably seen them. Uh, they come as email, usually um, AUA News and Global Connections. Um, the, there's a new one that's being created, the Urology Practice, which is going to be very 
clinically oriented, uh, not so much academic, but more clinically oriented and clinical issues and discussions um, will be in that um, small journal. We did a lot of um, discussion. There's no question that the new generation is, uh, the new millennium generation is forcing us to um, review uh, the technologies that we use for presenting our educational um, programs and, and materials. And as a result of um, uh, in-depth um, analysis at the AUA, we decided um, that we would create our own learning management system. Uh, you can go out and purchase them and you can have companies do them, but we decided we had the resources and we wanted to be able to manage it the way we saw uh, appropriate. So we've created our own learning management system. And the purpose of this is, is to create a user-friendly platform um, that we've decided to call AUA University. And it's going to be a, a, a very individualized dashboard for every member. And when you go on there, you will be able to view all your CME credits or courses that you've taken, whether you've done the post-test and completed the course. Um, you'll be able to save fav favorite articles or online um, courses that, that um, may be coming up. It will also present to you educational activities based on what you've done in the past that might be of interest to you. And you can view recommended courses based on your area of interest um, or specialty areas. This is just a sneak preview of what the dashboard is going to look like. Patrick Curley um, is actually our um, IS guy, our IT um, guru. And so he's created this. But you can see the course names that um, he's taken, the status of these courses, as well as some other um, recommended products or courses that may be of interest to him, and then um, individual areas that may um, present to him um, topics of, uh, in his area of interest. Um, this is the maintenance of certification information. Again, this isn't going to be applicable to Canadians, but um, after you've done your recertification exam at certain levels, your two, three, four, so you have to you have to achieve certain maintenance of certification. So this is going to help urologists because let me tell you, this is so confusing. Could they have made it any more complicated? Probably, but no, they didn't. But so this is going to be in an effort to try and help urologists keep abreast of where they need to be in their. CME and, and maintenance of certification. Um, the Journal of Urology um, will be housed on here, um, particularly the volumes that have the self-study. And so you'll be able to um, go through, uh, read the articles, and then do the um, post-tests and get your CME credits. Um, there's also the listing of the various educational um, uh, products. And I'll mention a little bit of these in a little bit later, but the update series, again, to be able to see um, what is in each of these and whether um, this may be appropriate for your um, educational um, uh, information. <clears throat> and then this, I, I used this this year preparing my Royal College. Um, I just went in and, and copied it and pasted it into the Royal College. This is all my CME credits and they keep track of it. Even if it's, for instance, the World Congress of Endurology, the AUA now um, oversees that um, conference. And so any credits that I got for that are automatically in my AUA dashboard because that's all part of it. So if you go to a section meeting, you'll, all your credits will be put onto this dashboard because it automatically goes in um, as part of the AUA. So this is very, I found very convenient even for um, doing my CME here. And just to mention, you know residents that you are registered as members of the AUA, okay? <laughs> just so you know that. Um, we are also increasingly focusing on um, international demands for education. And in the AUA University um, dashboard, there will also be a section on International Academy. And this, again, um, is pertaining to many of the courses, programs that we're putting on um, at international uh, sites and also um, for the educational um, um, materials and um, assessments. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit. So some specific learning tools that have been um, identified, and this has come out of um, questionnaires that I've been doing following some of the uh, research, or the uh, QE exam and the uh, recertification exam. <clears throat> but popular um, tools for studying, uh, one is the SASP, as it's uh, affectionately known, the Self-Assessment uh, self Study Program. And this is actually one of our most popular study tools. This and the um, AUA updates are uh, a beside the, the courses are the most popular thing for um, studying with. And I have to admit, I used this and it was very good for preparing for my recertification exam. 
Um, it's a 150 question multiple choice practice exam and it addresses core medical knowledge and advances in patient care. It can be done as spaced ed. And I have, how many of the residents have um, used the spaced ed for um, SASP? One, only one? Wow, okay. It's actually really cool. What this does is you sign into the, the SASP. And by the way, there's a, there's a, um, a, a for training programs, um, they have a, uh, a deal where you can purchase for a reduced cost, I think for five, the SASP for one, the price of one. So you can um, have it used amongst your residents um, at a reduced cost. But the, S, the spaced ed, and this is work from Price Kerfoot, who's shown that it's much better to do um, sort of longitudinal um, educational activity rather than one focused session. What this does is by email, it sends you two questions a week, and you answer the question. If you get the question right, it sends it back to you in two weeks, and if you answer it right the second time, you retire that question. If you get it wrong, it gives you the explanation as to why it's wrong and what is the right answer. And again, in I think it's three weeks, you get it back. If you answer it correctly, then you go another two weeks and they send it back to you. If you answer it correctly, it gets retired. So it's this process of going through these um, questions. But the nice thing about it, and I'll tell you, when I was preparing for my research exam, I mean, who's got the time to sit down and do a 150-question exam all at once? It was really nice because I could just every week know I was going to do a couple of questions and get my sort of update on what I needed for my research. So it's a really nice way, and it's um, been shown, it's been proven in educational research to actually improve your retention of knowledge. And believe me, I needed that help. <laughs> um, the other thing that we have, and I'm not sure, who's, who's familiar with the um, online journal club that we do? It used to be called um, Evidence-Based uh, Review. Nobody. Oh. oh, a few people. Oh, yay. <laughs> this, this is free. This is free. It's free, guys. Um, it's now called, because I think the name was, was, was confusing before, evidence-based reviews, I mean, what's that all about? So it's now called the Online Journal Club. And monthly, there's a topical article that's posted, and then an online forum or discussion board with the expert, and then there's two very structured reviews that are written by clinical and uh, methodolo uh, methodological um, experts that are posted with regards to that article. And there's even a post-test, so you can um, evaluate and even claim credits if you want. But what it is doing is it's taking a very pertinent topic with a, a, a recent journal article and um, literally going through like a journal club review. So it's just a nice way to um, keep up with uh, what's new and also um, get a feel for how to be critical in uh, reviewing these kind of um, articles. We've recently also added case of the month. This was... Um, due to the um, donation by um, the group at Cleveland, uh, uh, Cleveland, I think it was actually, no it was, it was Cleveland Clinic Foundation that had created this um, repository of uh, case scenarios that they would present. And we've now turned it into the case of the month and it's an uh, educational resource that um, presents a new case, features a common or important clinical scenario. And again, you can work through it um, and look at the main principles of disease process as well as fundamentals of clinical evaluation and management. Um, and this, um, uh, again, I think is, is very good for um, residents. Um, actually, uh, the group that has found it um, helpful um, that I found are the uh, folks that are preparing for their oral boards. It just gives you another um, area where you can look at case scenarios and how to work through them. And the important thing about um, that is uh, coming up with differential diagnoses and thinking about the um, options of treatment. Um, and that's what uh, this kind of a tool helps you do. Uh, we also have the AUA Update Series, which is a very popular um, uh, program, not just for residents, but um, for practicing urologists also. It's in its 33rd year. I mean, it's amazing. This thing is it's just an amazing um, educational program. And um, it provides uh, up-to-date information on four lessons a month um, for 10 months out of the year. It is available in print, although more and more we are encouraging people to go to the online format. And again, these are very concise, practically oriented lessons on very timely topics. Um, the committee meets and decides, they discuss and decide what topics. So if you have topics that you think are important, 
you could either send them to me or to Peter Carroll, who is the chair of that executive um, group at the present time. And we pick very um, excellent authors um, and uh, who are recognized for their expertise. I wanted to bring you up to date on core curriculum. I know um, many of you have probably seen this, and in its first um, iteration, it did not meet all of the needs of our residents. We met with the resident forum and the resident group um, during AUA, and so based on that, have turned it into more of a narrative format. And again, this is a sneak preview of what the new core curriculum 2.0 is going to look like. So it's going to have this um, feature where you will have a um, menu on one side. So if you want to, if you're looking at BPH and you want to go straight to looking at combination therapy, you can click on that and it'll tra take you right into that. But otherwise, it's going to be very concise narrative format, none of this bullet point um, format anymore, kind of like a Wikipedia where we just give you the nuts and bolts if you want more. Um, information than that, you can go to the references that are um, at, uh, that are included in this. The other nice thing is that there are images that are embedded right into the um, <clears throat> material as you as you scroll down through the uh, material on the topic. And if you want to, for instance, um, look more closely at one of the images, you can actually click on that, and it'll bring the image up bigger so that you can um, see it more clearly. There will be the tables, again, included within the text. So rather than having previously there had been you know, table one and you had to click on table one and that opened up table one, now table one is right there in the, in the um, uh, text. And if you don't want to read it, you can just scroll right through it. But it's right there if you want it. Again, being able to um, click on the image um, that may be within the text and bringing that up in a larger format so that you can see it more easily. This is going to be not only compatible with your computer and your iPad, but your iPhone. So there is an app for this, so you can um, carry this around with you um, on your iPhone. The AUA um, completely supports the exam committee, which is created by the American Board of Urology. And this group is a very hardworking um, group of folks. They develop all of the questions for the SASP, for the in-service exam and for the oncology knowledge assessment um, uh, exam. They are also proposing to create a dedicated pediatric um, exam, which um, is coming down the pipe. The AUA is who supports this. <coughs> we create and support all of the meetings as well as the um, development of the exams. We do all of the statistical exam um, analysis, question um, each, every, every single question on an in-service or an exam like the um, OCATS, gets analyzed. And we look at these stats when the committee comes together. We look at each individual question. If a question has not performed well, it gets either thrown out completely or it gets rewritten and um, then reapplied um, in a future exam. So we um, really support all of this, which is a huge undertaking. Um, as I mentioned, uh, of course, the AUA um, presents the in-service exam, and you folks are, are part of that. This is um, considered to be a formative assessment, not a summative assessment for U.S. and Canadian residents. Um, this year it was uh, in November, and it was a 172-item multiple-choice question. There's often been the, question, the query as to whether it's valid to include Canadians in this assessment, and are we unfairly um, putting them um, you know, at a disadvantage because of uh, various aspects and differences in our healthcare systems as well as um, the way our lab values are, are set up in any way. Um, but as it turns out, when we do the, and we've been doing this now for three years, doing s specific statistical analysis to compare the Canadian residents, there's no significant difference between your scores and theirs. So cool your jet, guys. It is an appropriate exam to be, for you to use in, in your formative um, process. Um, the, um, for the first year this year, it was in a computerized um, online format. So we had 218 proctors and program directors um, surveyed after the exam, and we found that the majority found the online registration process easy. 30% of the programs did experience some computer problems, but most of those turned out to either be resolved with AUA support, and the majority of them were due to problems at their own center, either firewalls that their center put up or um, a couple of them had um, some uh, isolated power issues. 
So in all, the computer ISE um, was hugely successful, and we will be continuing that format. It's certainly a lot easier to do. This shipping of these exams all over the country um, or all over North America is just a pain. Increasingly, we've had demands from um, international groups to help them in providing a formative assessment exam. And in fact, we now have um, 269 residents from China, India, and Mexico who have participated in the 2013 international ISE. This is a separate exam, totally different from your um, ISE that the uh, US and um, Canadian residents see. Um, I think your exam is probably, well, probably a little tougher. Anyway. Um, and then recently we're um, adding another 250 residents from Argentina and Egypt. Last, year, last week when I was at AUA, Turkey has put in an application, so we'll probably be um, increasing that. And definitely in um, this year we will be also incorporating residents from the Caribbean, um, Qatar, and Lebanon um, in the international ISE um, exam. So that's, that's a big undertaking because those are paper exams and we, we do have to send those all over the world, which is a bit of a pain, but anyway, it's worth it. Um, at annual meeting, we have very specific things for the residents. There's the Young Urologist, for, Urologist Forum. This year is David Penson. If you've never heard David speak, you've got to go. He's just, he's such an engaging speaker. He's just a great guy. Um, and uh, he's done a lot of work on um, um, <clears throat> uh, quality assessment and, um, uh, oh, what am I trying to say? Quality of life, thank you. Quality of life <laughs> issues for uh, patients. Um, we also have, of course, the AUA Residence Forum, um, and uh, actually the residents um, put that together and decide on, on who's going to speak at that. Then there's the National Urology Residence Preceptor Program um, that you can participate in, and it has various people that come to it who you can speak to if you're interested in talking to people that are specifically specialized um, or in academic medicine in areas that you may have an interest in. And of course, the um, very popular um, third annual Residence Bowl this year. Uh, you should contact your section because the sections have uh, groups of residents that participate in this. And then, of course, there's the AUA re chief resident um, debate that occurs, and these are all very engaging activities. So I'd like to just sort of finish off with a discussion on submissions for course applications. We have um, actually this year a little over 100 ICPG courses being presented at the AUA. Um, I normally get a little over 200 applications, um, and it is a rigorous process of reviewing each of those. If they're a recurring course application, I will review all of the evaluations that came in from that course. And in addition to my uh, review, we have subspecialty committees for each, and there's, um, I think there's 16 of the subspecialty committees that will review their course applications that are specific to their subspecialty. So they review, I review, um, we then get together on a telephone conference call all day on a Friday in July and we discuss all of the course applications and the decision is made. So it's not just my decision alone. So when you, if you are putting in an application, I would strongly recommend that you discuss it with whoever is on the committee for your subspecialty, and you can find out that information just by contacting the Office of Education. Um, <clears throat> the um, the uh, application process for annual meeting for the following year opens up mid-April, so in, in mid-next month for 2015, course applications will open for mm -hmm. annual meeting, and they stay open until mid-June. And then um, they are closed and we do our reviews and then we meet at the beginning of July and decide because the annual meeting is determined. We plan the entire annual meeting at that um, meeting we do at, in the beginning of July. So everything is, is um, organized um, and, and, well, not finalized, but it's beginning to be developed for finalization. Now there are also, as you know, standalone courses throughout the year that the AUA puts on and again, um, oh, this is just uh, telling you things that the committees are looking for when you put in your applications for the annual meeting courses. Make sure they're applicable, particularly to general urology. Um, that seems to be a big point, as well as um, if they are have applicability to other um, healthcare professionals, such as um, uh, nurse practitioners, uh, physician assistants, those sort of people, um, indicate that um, so that we can um, uh, evaluate the course accordingly. And 
be sure you have well-developed learning objectives and address your specific educational need that you've identified. In terms of standalone courses, there is a formal application process for this as well. And um, you can go to this um, website, um, which will take you directly into it. And um, it's important in that application to emphasize a specific need for the particular course topic, clearly de delineate the course objectives, and outline the involvement of industry, particularly if you're going to have a hands-on lab component. This is just the um, screenshot of the uh, website. And uh, the various courses that we um, have are live courses, didactic only. They may be didactic with hands-on skills training or um, didactic with case scenario presentations, panel debates. Um, and then we also have uh, other course options, our e-learning modules, which we're beginning to develop more and more, and um, the live course um, with e-learning. So again, de um, delineate the practice gap, uh, explain what the <coughs> gap is, and then um, click on the menu to insert. So that's a very um, brief description of some of the um, opportunities and, and programs that we have available at the AUA. Um, I've tried to focus primarily on resident education, but um, certainly we have other educational opportunities. This is all in an effort to achieve our, our mission. We had our ACCME, which is the Accredita uh, Accreditation Council of Continuing Medical Education site review last week. I was at uh, headquarters um, on Friday, and um, I think we were very favorably reviewed by the two surveyors. They were quite impressed with the depth and breadth of our CME activities, and more importantly, with the um, evaluations that we're doing of our educational activities. I review every single course evaluation and all of the comments that come back. And based on that and my discussions with the, fact, with the course co-directors, um, we determine whether the course will continue, what changes we will make, because we are constantly trying to meet the needs um, of our learners. Uh, I know I'm an old fogey, but I do understand that there's a change in the new millennium concept and what they need um, in their learning formatting. We are trying very hard to meet that need for you um, and make your educational um, uh, urology to be a, a pleasant and enjoyable uh, part of your careers. I'm happy to answer any questions uh, or comments. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>